Good morning, my name is Steve Rennie. I am the Ren Baron and this is my Ren Baron Learning to Fly YouTube channel. On today's flight, me and the wife are going to be flying leg three of our trip to the Yucatan Peninsula this past winter. While the first two legs of our trip to Mexico were rather uneventful, today's flight highlights one of the great challenges of flying cross-country flights. Learning to fly in unfamiliar airspace. Spotting the airport and the runway that you're going to land on seems simple enough, and it is when you're flying in your local neighborhood. When you're first learning to fly, you'll spend lots of time just circling around your home airport. And when you do that, you get familiar with the terrain. You start to identify visual reference points. Maybe it's an office building or a freeway intersection or a golf course. But even flying in your local neighborhood can get a lot trickier when you throw in the great wild card of flying, and that's weather. Spotting your airport when it's clear and sunny is one thing. Doing it when there's scattered clouds around the airport, perhaps there's some fog, or there's some haze, or you're at the end of the day and it's dusk and the light is fading, that is quite a different matter. Doing it hundreds if not thousands of miles away in unfamiliar territory is even tougher. So what I've learned is that it's best to have a plan before you get there, and then you need to stick to the plan. Otherwise, you might be making your day a lot tougher than it needs to be. Come along for the ride. Okay, we're in uh, San Antonio getting ready to leave. It's a quarter to one. We're heading for Brownsville, Texas, and then off to Mexico, Merida, Merida. Right. Right. We'll, we'll the Ren Baron and the Baroness. All right, let's fire this baby up here. From Out to zero thousand. Temperature one five. Dew point minus zero four. Altimeter three zero four three. ILS runway 16 approach in use. Advise on initial contact. You have information, Victor. Uh, Sierra 768 Foxtrot Sierra in Atlantic with Victor. I'd like to pick up my IFR flight plan to Brownsville. Hey, Foxtrot Sierra. Clear to uh, Brownsville as uh, S mile. On departure runway heading 3000, expect 9000 10 minutes after. Departure frequency will be 125.7, squawk 4520. Okay, we're cleared to Brownsville as filed. Uh, we'll fly runway heading to start. 3,000 is our initial altitude. 9,000 in 10 minutes. 125.7 on the departure frequency and 4520 on the squawk. 8 Fox Shots here. 8 Fox Shots here. Are we back correct? Advised. Ready taxi. Uh, let me get that program and I'll come back to you for taxi. 8 Fox Shots here. Thank you. Kelly Field Ground. Sierra 768 Fox Shots here. Ready to taxi. Copy runway. 16 at Charlie. Taxi out via Charlie. Intersection departure. 1-6 via Charlie, 8 Foxtrot Sierra, thank you. Kelly Field Tower, Sierra 768, uh, Foxtrot Sierra, holding short runway 1-6 for IFR departure. 6-8 Foxtrot Sierra, runway 1-6 at Charlie, wind calm, clear for takeoff. 1-6, clear for takeoff, 8 Foxtrot Sierra, thank you. So, that was 1 o'clock on the dot. Let's keep it go. Okay. Off to Brownsville. Tower is all the way in. Get it live. Laps 90, little shake, rattle, and roll there. Looking for a 1290 is our caps. There's our caps. 600. Hey, Fox Shot Sierra, contact departure, have a good flight. Contact your departure, thanks for your help, 8 Fox Shot Sierra. San Antonio departure, Sierra 768, Fox Shot Sierra 2000, climbing 3000. Number 768, Fox Shot Santa Cruz, good afternoon. All right then, climb and maintain. 6,000. Ident climb main chain 6, 8 Fox Shot Sierra, thank you. Number 8 Fox Shot Sierra, you're at a contact, uh, 4 south of Kelly Field, clear to Yen's intersection. Clear to Rick Yen's 8 Fox Shot Sierra, thank you. Dr. Foster, Victor, you're number 2, fall south 11 o'clock, 3 and a half miles, southeast town, American Airbus, 3,000. 1 6, maintain 3,000, go establish, keep it limit. Eight Fox Shot Sierra, climb maintain 900,000. Climb maintain 900,000, eight Fox Shot Sierra. Dock and Foster, Victor, contact tower, good day. Ready to go down the Gulf Coast. Antonio Perch, good afternoon. Cruise checklist ready to go. Okay. Let her speed up. 
Right, so now Back you go back to your map. There you, there you go. There we go. Seems good. Hour and 15 is kind of leisurely okay. good to uh, Here is 8 Fox Rod Sierra, contact Houston Center 134.6. 34.6, 8 Fox Rod Sierra. Houston Center, Sierra 768, Fox Trot Sierra, level 9 or 1000. Sierra 768, Fox Trot Sierra, welcome, Corpus, altimeter 3041. 3041, thanks for having us, 8 Fox Trot Sierra. November 8, Fox Trot Sierra, you're correct, Corpus VOR. Direct Corpus, Christy VOR, 8 Fox Trot Sierra. Enter, activate, so now she's sending us direct, Corpus Christy. All right, so let's go down and cheat the weather here. At nine, scattered clouds at 3,200, overcast at 43. Okay, so let's start doing a little advance work here. Winds at 020, so it'll probably give us 3-1. A while back, I posted a video from our very first cross-country trip. We were flying into Austin, Texas at the end of a very long day. The sun was going down as it was getting near dusk, and we're trying to find the airport. And when ATC asked you have the airport in sight, I reported that I did, but I really didn't. And when you don't, things can get very tricky very fast. Caution, terrain, caution, terrain. And I learned a valuable lesson that day. When I'm flying to an unfamiliar airport, I'm going to stay on the IFR flight plan and take an approach where I know where I'm supposed to be at every step of the way. We're going to see what I learned here in just a moment as we start our approach into Brownsville, Texas. Yeah, we're back with you again uh, for about a half hour out from Brownsville. Uh, we're flying through some clouds now. We're on top of them. Nice and pretty view here. Should be picking up the ATIS here in a second. Time 1948, wind 10, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 8,000 broken. Temperature 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2,
But unlike that trip to Austin, the controller here is giving us a couple options, including the RNAV GPS approach. Now, one would think that given our past experience that that decision would be a no-brainer, but you'd be wrong. Now, there's a reason they call that person in the left seat the pilot in command. Because at the end of the day, it's not the controller that flies the plane, it's the pilot, and it's up to him or her to make great decisions. And in this case, I didn't make a great decision, and you'll see the results of it here in a minute. Uh, I'll be able to, why don't you back to me for the, the visual for 3 1 with me, right? I got two points at the airport, that's your uh, total cost for one three miles. Uh, it's going to maintain uh, 1,500. I maintain 1,500 in Fox Trot here. Now we approach a Fox Trot, it's pretty hazy out here, so if you can just give me the vectors for the visual, I think once we get closer, we'll be able to see it. That's uh, number eight, Fox Trot here. We're heading out one, because there should be sitting up for about a uh, four mile left base, or right base. Okay, one six zero, thank you, eight Fox Trot here. Unlike flying around my home airport, the area here is all flat with no buildings, no freeways, and no visual reference points. I think I see it out there now. Well, I'm about that there, Brownsville Airport. And I think it's in one o'clock, uh, one zero miles. I think I have it in sight, eight five shots here. Got a tower over there, right over here, one o'clock. Okay. Oh, I'm seeing it. No, it's not. It looks like it, it looks like a tower. It's really hard to see the, what, which one of these is the runway. That the tower straight ahead right now? Yeah. Is the runway going this way? Nope, this way. Okay. Right here. Valley approach, 8-5 trots here. I have the tower in sight now. Number 8-5 trots here, clear visual approach, runway 31, contact ground the tower. Uh, clear for the visual approach, contact the tower, 8-5 trots here, thank you. I'm going to take a picture full now. Yeah. Autopilot. Brownsville Tower, Cirrus 768, Fox trots here, inbound for the visual for 31. 768, Foxtrot Sierra, Brownsville Tower, good afternoon, continue down, right base, runway 31, report right base. Report right base, 8 Foxtrot Sierra. But as we get a bit closer, I'm not so sure that I have the airport in sight. Not what I thought it was. Right. Okay. Oh, there it is yeah. over there. Oh, my God. That's the airport over there. Okay, I'm going to split the screen now so you can see what's happening in the cockpit and out the front window. Now, as I look out the front window, I'm not seeing anything that actually looks like an airport. So I'm using my avionics to guide me best I can. I'm flying direct to the final approach fix. And as I get to that final approach fix, as you can see here on the MFD, I'm going to have to make a big, hard right turn. And when I do that, it's going to make for a very short final approach. To make matters worse, I should have been about 900 feet at that final approach fix, but I'm actually about 1,300 feet, which means I'm really high. What I should have been doing was making a heading turn to about 130, squaring myself up with the final approach course, making a right base turn, and then a right turn to final, which would have made for a much safer approach. But I didn't, and as a result, I'm going to overshoot the runway a bit and have to land long to make up for it. Right base, 8-5 shots here. 8-5 shots here, runway 3-1, clear land. 3-1, clear land, 8-5 shots here. This is a second, going to be very high. Now make sure it's full. So I just take those GPS approaches when they come out here. Well, better late than never, I guess. You'll have to get that one on the next time around. Very high here.
500. Flying log here. Tower, they're on 721, with you on the visual for 3-1. 721, Brownsville, Tower, good afternoon, runway 31, clear to land. Good afternoon, runway 31, clear to land, they're on 721. Okay, a lot of way on, but... Scary a little bit, huh? Um. Clearly not one of my best landings, that's for sure. So I've retreated here to the comfort of my virtual hangar to give a think about what I did wrong and how I can do better the next time. In golf, there's a term called a mulligan. And what that is, is if you're playing with your buddies on a Saturday game and you hit the first ball in the trees, they'll say, come on, Rand, I'm going to give you a mulligan, and you get a do-over. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen in the aviation business. Everything is one for the money. Today's flight was a real lesson in aeronautical decision making. On this flight, I had to choose between two different options to fly into the Brownsville Airport. And as you can see in the video, um, I perhaps chose the wrong one, which begs the question, what would have happened had I chosen the other option, the RNAV 3-1 approach? What if we could actually get a little mulligan? Well, today we are going to take a little mulligan, not by actually flying back to Brownsville, Texas in my Cirrus, but doing it on a simulator. You saw what a bad decision looks like. Now let's see what a better decision looks like. So come along for one more ride. To make things as realistic as possible here on the simulator, what I've attempted to do is replicate all of the settings that I had in the cockpit on our real flight with the settings that we're going to have here on our virtual flight. Okay, let's take a look at our instruments and see what we've got here. We're heading to Brownsville Airport. We're 12.3 miles away. We're descending to 2,000 feet. We're on a 170 heading. We're doing about 130 knots with 43% of power in our altimeter is 3032 pretty darn close to what we were experiencing on the actual flight to replicate the weather at that time here i've added a little extra haze in to kind of give us a similar look and feel to the flight and i've also adjusted the wind for 010 at 11 so that we get the exact winds on arrival I'll be using X-Plane 11 with the Torx Sim Aviation SR22 Turbo Normalized G3 version of the simulator. And to make it even more realistic, I'm going to be flying the approach today on my Cirrus cockpit console provided by the fine folks at Real Sim Gear. If you're serious about flying a Cirrus aircraft, it's the next best thing to actually being in the cockpit. Now, you've probably noticed that this flight model SR-22 looks a lot like my real SR-22. And I want to thank Stephen McKenzie from uh, Torque Sim Aviation for taking the time to customize my little flight model here. I appreciate it. And it makes it feel like I'm almost flying the real thing. Okay, let's fly the RNAV 3-1 approach to Brownsville. Now, once I've accepted that RNAV 3-1 approach, the first thing I'm going to need to do is load the approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the GCU. I'm going to hit the flight plan button right here, which is going to bring up the flight plan page. Then I'm going to go back to the GCU and click Procedures going to bring me up to this window. I'm going to take the FMS button and scroll down to select approach. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to scroll down to the RNAV GPS 3.1. Hit enter again. I'm going to pick my transition which is CAMM. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to go to the barrel minimum. Then I'm going to enter 270 which is the minimum for this particular approach. Then I'm going to hit enter and there we are and then back to the flight plan. Now, as you can see right here, the approach is loaded, so now we're going to need to uh, activate the approach, and we're going to do that by going and taking on the GCU. We're going to click on, click on that fat button here, and we're going to scroll down to Canem, and then I'm going to hit the direct button down here on the GCU, and then I'm going to hit enter, enter, and now we're going to direct Canem, and then finally, I'm going to go back down to that GCU, I'm going to hit the nav button, and 
then come up top, and there we go, and the plane makes the turn. And now we are heading to Cayman. Let's look at it on the map here. Let's sync up our heading. Now we have 9.1 miles to Camo. And what we have now is some time because we don't have to be looking for the airport. Really all I have to do now is make sure I stay on our RNAV approach. Pretty simple. The, the autopilot is going to handle that. And now I have to just manage my descent and make sure I've set the plane up properly. Now, as you can see right here, this is very, even though it's a simulator, this is very close in terms of the look and feel to how it was on that particular day here. See, it's kind of hazy there, kind of hard to pick things out here. One of the things that's interesting about this terrain around Brownsville, Texas, it's very flat, lots of green, not a lot of buildings, not a lot of roads, not a lot of visual references that I would see around my home airport in Santa Monica, and that's what made this so difficult. Now, even though this Torx Sim Aviation flight model for uh, the Cirrus is terrific, one of the things I can't do here is display the charts within the uh, MFD there. But that's not a problem if you have an iPad. So let me bring my iPad into the mix here. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I always have that iPad in the plane with me. And one of the things I like to do is make sure it's always synced up with my MFD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Procedures button up here. I'm going to go to the Approaches. I'm going to load the NAV 3.1 approach here. I'm going to select CAMM as my initial approach fix. I'm going to add that to the route here. Now I'm going to go to the nav log here and I'm going to scroll up to camem and I'm going to hit camem right here and then I'm going to go direct to and now if you get rid of that you'll see that my iPad represents the same thing that we have over here on my MFD. Now if we zoom in on the MFD over here, specifically the flight plan, you'll see that we have a number of altitude reference points listed here for the approach. The first one is 2000 at Camem, we're on our way there, and the second one is 2000 at SAMU. I'll pull back so you can see what those look like on the approach plate here. 2000 SAMU, 1700 Sewell, which is our final approach fix, and then down to 520 feet at Danio. So what I'm going to do now to save us a little time is dial in that 1700 for our final approach fix, and then we're going to make our way into this turn. And as we come wings level out of the turn, it's a good chance to check our scoreboard. We're heading from Camem to Samu. We got six miles to go. We've synced up our heading on 220. And now we've got some time to go through our checklist. We can start on our descent checklist. Our altimeter is set. Our cabin heat defrost is good. We'll turn on our landing light. Our fuel system is on the fullest tank. Our mixture is as required. Brake pressure is good, and the oxygen will put it, make sure our seatbelt and shoulder harnesses are secure. Our fuel pump is in boost. Here's as required for right now, and flaps are not required just yet, so back to the map. And as we cross over SAMU, I'm going to arm the approach by heading down to the GCU, pressing the approach button. And now our approach is armed. Now I'll set 1700 for our final approach fix altitude, sync the heading, give it some vertical speed, about 300 feet a minute down should take care of it. Now at this point I'm also going to start to pull back a little power, get our speed where we need it to be. Shortly after I started learning to fly five and a half years ago, I started to record cockpit video. Initially, I didn't do it to put the videos on YouTube. I did it because I found cockpit video to be such a powerful learning tool. Things happen fast when you're in the cockpit. And oftentimes I found that what I thought was happening was not happening at all. So having that cockpit video gave me a chance to review everything and to get better as a pilot. Being able to use a simulator sitting in the comfort of my office and fixing some of the things that I've screwed up in the air has been a huge game changer. Sharing those lessons I've learned on YouTube is the bonus. Using the simulator today to help make that point is even more fun. I hope you find it as helpful as I found it. Now at this point we got our speed to 30%. We got uh, right at our glide path altitude. We're 1.8 miles from Shul. As you can see out ahead of us at about 1130, there's the runway in sight. 
which was really the whole point of the exercise, which is to find the runway. And as you can see right here, it turns out that flying this instrument approach was an absolute no-brainer. Why I decided to fly the visual approach, I have no idea, but uh, that's why you fly to learn. Now, let's see if it picks up that glide path. Should. It did not for some reason. Okay, well, that's why it didn't. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to put in 520 is our next altitude, and we're going to start tipping her down at about five, 600 feet a minute. Start pulling a little power, and I'm going to give it the first level of flaps. Okay, our pathways has kicked in. 1,000 feet above our selected altitude. We got two reds and two whites, it looks like. We're right in the pathways, which means we're looking good. Do our final checklist there before landing checklist. Everything is keep belt shoulder on secure. Fuel pump is good. Flaps autopilot is good. Back to the map. Pull in a little bit more power. 500 feet. We're going to continue our approach here. Okay, we're under 110, so now I'm going to give it that last hit of flaps here. Flaps two. Autopilot off, and we're going to fly it home. Two reds, two whites. See if we can grease the landing on the simulator here. Nice stable approach. A lot less drama than our original landing here. Still got two reds, two whites. Looking at that red line. Let's keep pulling her out. Now, I want you to pay attention to the indicated airspeed. In my real SR-22, we should be about 77 over the numbers. And as you can see right here on the Torque Sim model, that's exactly what we've got. And I touched down 1,000 feet into the runway, not 3,500 feet. All right, there we go, right in the middle of the runway. It's a, a much less dramatic approach into Brownsville, Texas, one I should have done the first time. But that's why you fly. You fly to learn, and uh, you learn to fly. If you like what you saw in today's video, I hope you'll click that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. There's San Antonio to Brownsville, the easy way, RNAV 3-1. Moral of the story is, if you're having trouble finding the airport, fly the instrument approach so you don't have to guess. You can just fly the plane. My name is Steve Rennie. I am the Ren Baron. This is my Ren Baron Learning to Fly YouTube channel, and I am out of here. Hello. Hello.